Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to go over some more techniques for styling web forms. Okay, so I just made a video uh, styling this top form up here, and we've got our inputs and our text area box all lined up nice and neat, and that was pretty easy to do. In the first form, the inputs were wrapped within the label. Now I want to do another form here. In this second form, I'm going to do a slightly different technique. Actually, this is the one I kind of prefer, really. Um, my label text is completely wrapped in a label tag, set of label tags, and each of these labels has a for attribute. And they are connected to the inputs by the ID attribute. So now my labels are not surrounding the inputs. But the link is still going to be there because the label with a for attribute will link up with an input element or a form element with an ID attribute. So I'm still going to have that really usable convenience factor. When somebody clicks on a label for email address, it will activate that email box. That's what you want. And there's two techniques to do it, and here's examples of both of them. So I'm in a separate section, which is not styled. Let's go ahead and take care of that. So I'm going to head up to my styles, and one of the first things I'll do, just so we can kind of visualize some stuff. Let's see, I'm in my Form 2 section. I'm going to take my labels. So this is a descendant sec uh, selector, labels within my ID element F2, which is my section F2 down here. I'm going to take these labels, and just so we can see them, I'm going to put a little red border around them. There we go. So now we can clearly see where those labels are. Check this out, though. I'm going to take those labels, and I'm going to display them as a block element. Now, doing that one little change there is going to make sure that each label is on its own line. Now, I want you to ignore the fact that my text box is a little weird. But by making those labels block elements, each one is on its own line. But I want the text boxes and text area to be right next to them. So I'm also going to take these labels and I'm going to float left. Now whenever you float something to the left, whatever follows it is going to try to wrap around its side. And you think, oh crap, that looks even worse. We're taking the, it's one of those things, one step backwards for two steps forward kind of thing. But that's all right. I'm going to float my labels to the left, but then I'm going to clear left. Now I know this is kind of weird to think about, but by my labels will float to the left, which means what follows them, in this case text, input type text, and text area and things like that, are going to wrap around the side. But the next label is going to clear a left floating object. So this is going to have a pretty cool effect for us. Now our labels are three, one on top of the other, and things are looking a little bit better. You're like, oh man, that looks even worse before, right? Well, we can fix all of this here. And part of the deal is just the width of what we're dealing with, the width of our form. If I went to my form, for instance, my F2 form, and I put a thin border on that one, you would see that my form is quite, it's quite wide. What if this form was a little bit less wide? I'll do 400 pixels. There we go. The form's a little bit smaller, and things are going to start to look a little bit better. Okay. Well, what if all of my labels were the same width? So I can go to my labels and start to set their width now. 140 pixels. Now all three labels are the same width, and looks, look what would have happened to my text boxes right next to them there. Starting to see them kind of line up nice and neat. Well, what if I'm still with my labels? I can get rid of those borders now. Don't need those. Don't need that green border up there. And I'll do a little uh, margin bottom four pixels. Okay, so things are looking a little bit better. And the other thing I might add a little bit of margin to are some of these elements over here. You'll notice that you know I've got this uh, input type text, I've got an input type um, email, and then I've got this text area box. So I can create rules for these. Within my F2 section, I'm going to go ahead and take my inputs, and I'm also going to take my text area, and I'll just put a little bit of margin bottom on them, also about four pixels. Things are really starting to line up nice and neat. Okay. And if I want a nice consistent width with all of these, well, I just head back over to my editor here. I say, okay, well, I'm going to put a width of 
200 pixels on these items and now they all start to stretch out a little bit. Notice that text area box still a little bit off compared to the others so I can create another rule. Oh, I'll just type it out here. And I'll set its width to 201 pixels which I remember from the last form looked pretty good. There we go. So now they kind of line up a little bit better. Looks kind of nice. Hey, you'll notice this. Check this out. My input type submit has also taken on the characteristics. I'll get to that in a quick second. But now that we've got this done, it's really easy to go back and go to my labels and I can do a text align right on the labels to get that right aligned text there. And if I want a little spacing there, I can do some padding on the right. Actually, that needs to be padding dash right. Five pixels. So get a little space there. And now it's something more like that Zappos contact form where they had the right aligned um, labels. That looks pretty good. So nice little example of styling that form. Now for that submit button, if I want to deal with that specifically, well, I can do the old uh, input square bracket type equals submit. This is an, uh, an attribute selector. And I can say, look, I don't want it to be 200 pixels wide. I want it to be 120 pixels wide. I want it to be 30, 40 pixels tall. Sure. I'm going to do a little line height of 40 pixels. And last but not least, I'll stick a margin, ooh, let's do margin left on there, of 145 pixels. Where am I getting that number from? Well, I know that my labels are 140 pixels wide, and I know they got a little padding of 5 pixels on the right, so added them together, 145. Let's save that. Head over to the browser, refresh, and there we go. So now we have that really big submit button right after the text area box. Oops, no server. So another little example of styling a web form. So using a technique I actually like a little bit better and this of course is when your form labels are more independent. They use a for attribute to link up with an ID attribute of the input.